Hi, in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, measuring the equivalent series resistance of a capacitor using a multimeter and a function generator. ESR is a very important parameter, especially for filter capacitors used in switching power supplies. And surprisingly, a lot of the uh, power supply failures, especially the ones with switching power supplies, can be traced back to a bad capacitor with extraordinarily high ESR value. So measuring the ESRs of capacitors is very important when we need to troubleshoot the problem at hand. And before I get started, I just want to recap how uh, we are going to measure the ESR of a capacitor and uh, what are some of the uh, things we need to pay attention to. So basically, the simplest way to measure an ESR, uh, ESR of a capacitor is to use an AC source uh, that generates a, some kind of voltage, and uh, we have a uh, current limiting resistor, and sometimes this is built into the, uh, the generator source, R0, and we have our capacitor under test. And for capacitors, we can think of it as a uh, ideal capacitor in series with a, a RESR, so this is our equivalent resistance. So in this case, the R0 from the uh, signal generator and our ESR forms a voltage divider. And by measuring the voltage divider, uh, divider voltage here, we can calculate the equivalent series re resistance of our uh, capacitor. Because a lot of times the ESRs are measured in circuit, which means we cannot uh, supply too high of a voltage so that, uh, you know, if you have a, let's say, a PN junction somewhere uh, in parallel with your capacitor, then that's going to become conducting. So we wanted this uh, reference voltage to be as low as possible. So typically, we wanted to say something about 100 millivolts. So in this, in this case, even the Schottky diodes, we cannot uh, turn it on because the voltage is so low. Also, when you have a polarized electrolytic capacitor, it is generally not recommended to have an AC signal pass through as it has a, its polarity. But when this uh, voltage is sufficiently low, that does not affect the performance of the capacitor or you won't damage it in any way. So that value of the maximum uh, reverse voltage can be applied to a polarized capacitor is uh, in most cases on the data sheet. Usually that is under one volt. So by applying a 100 millivolt signal to the voltage divider, we really, uh, by applying, sorry, the 100 millivolts signal to a capacitor, most of the time it, uh, uh, it's sufficiently low that it won't cause any damage. And it's relatively, it's very safe value to, to do that. And because the reactance of a capacitor is uh, inversely proportional to the frequency that it's operated under, we need to make sure that the frequency is sufficiently high so that we can ignore the reactance and only concentrate on its ESR. So when a capacitor's reactance uh, can, uh, is ignored, we can come up with this um, uh, ESR versus measured voltage across the capacitor uh, graph. The x-axis here is our measured voltage across the, uh, the AC voltage across the capacitor under test. The y-axis is the equivalent series resistance when our source is a 50 ohm output impedance uh, signal generator. And uh, this y-axis will change if you are using a different uh, resistance uh, as opposed to our 50 ohm terminated generator. But uh, the shape of the uh, curve is mostly the same. And when the measured voltage is sufficiently low, we can even linearize this uh, graph to make it easier to calculate. 
So as you can see that this region uh, is probably most, most of the time that we use because when we are measuring at 18 millivolts, the ESR is already 11 ohm, which is going to be uh, in our region that we don't want to use that capacitor anymore. So, so far, everything is under the assumption that we are ignoring the reactance of the capacitor. But in reality, the reactance is frequency dependent. So, let's take a look at uh, uh, the frequency dependency of the reactance. And here is a graph showing the frequency versus your capacitance for each given reactance uh, value. So, how do we use this uh, uh, chart? Well. For example, if we're, let's say we're using 1000 Hz as our measuring frequency, what this chart really means is if you want to get a reactance less than, let's say, 1 ohm, this, your capacitance value needs to be greater than uh, at least 150 microfarads. So this is kind of give you a guidance of what frequency to use when you are measuring the equivalent series resistance of a capacitor. And for lower reactants, you need a higher frequency for the same uh, capacitance value. So typically, we wanted to keep the uh, reactants as low as possible so we can ignore it during our calculation. Because remember, our calculation of the curve uh, previously is under the assumption that the reactance is uh, zero, so we totally ignored it. So in reality, we wanted to keep it as low as possible. But there are some technical uh, reasons. Sometimes you can't go too low because when you are increasing the frequency, you are introducing um, significant inductance in your measurement leads, which can also cause inaccuracy of your measurement. So we need to find a balance between the fre measurement frequency and uh, your, um, the, the reactance that is acceptable for this measurement. Another reason you might not want to use a very high frequency is that typical multimeter uh, doesn't respond very well above a few kilohertz, let's say, frequency. So for this actually measurement, we're using a Keithley 197, which uh, remains flat, the measurement curve, up to about 150 kilohertz. And some, some other meters, like my Keithley 196, you can measure that all the way up to 300 kilohertz. So this is another uh, something to keep in mind when doing the SR measurement. So with the enough set, we will take a look at how we set up the experiment here. So here I have my uh, BK Precision 4011 function generator, and I set it to sine wave. And uh, right now I'm setting the frequency range to 50, uh, 5K and uh, output a one kilohertz uh, sine wave. Now, the waveform is, uh, also can affect the measurement of your ESR, and usually what you do is you want to choose a waveform that uh, your circuit will be working under. And the ESR in general is uh, something that uh, cannot be measured really accurately unless you take into consideration the temperature, the voltage, the waveform, the frequency, and the construction of the capacitor, a bunch of uh, factors. But uh, for our purpose, we just want to see the ballpark of that uh, ESR. So anyway, so right now I set it to 1 kilohertz, and, uh, and the uh, Keithley 197, here I set it to AC mode and manual ranging for 100 uh, milli millivolts. So what we do is we connect uh, these two leads together. And so this measures roughly uh, 100. Let me just can't see if we can adjust it. And it, the actual voltage is not really uh, important as long as you take into consideration. By the way, the chart I showed earlier, this is uh, uh, when the measurement voltage, the overall voltage is 100 millivolts. I forgot to mention that, which is important. Uh, the reason we chose 100 millivolts is that so that uh, the power, uh, so it doesn't turn on any dials in, in circuit, which we can see a little bit later. But anyway, here I have a uh, uh, 
some capacitors. Let's take a look at this. So this is a 16-volt, uh, uh, 1,000 microfarad capacitor. And uh, so all the capacitors here are actually good capacitors. I just want to see... Uh, so you, when we're measuring this, you can see that's 0.3 ohms, 3.5. So that's a definitely good capacitor. And uh, um, if we are measuring something that is lower in capacitance value, for instance, this one, you can see that it's a 22 microfarad. So then you cannot use this one kilohertz frequency because that will be too low. Uh, remember we saw in this uh, diagram that if we are 10 uh, kilohertz, uh, sorry, 10 microfarad, we probably need uh, at least, let's see, uh, 10, uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 30,000 uh, kilohertz in order for us to be able to ignore the reactants. So let's first try without increasing the frequency. We'll see what it uh, looks like. So you can see, oops, so you can see that right now the, uh, the resistance measured is like 14 ohms, so which is totally out of uh, range because of the reactants. So let's change that to, uh, to, let's see, 96K. And you can see that it goes down to 0.8 uh, ohm. So this, again, is a good capacitor. So unfortunately, right now, I don't have any capacitor that is not good because I toss those uh, out as soon as I find them. But uh, uh, you can kind of get a sense of um, the capacitor value. So again, this is a... Um, 3,300 microfarad capacitor, and we'll measure it under uh, 1K frequency. And uh, let's see. So, no problem. This is only 0.24 ohms. So, this will be very easy for you to do uh, this kind of measurement, this setup. And the same setup can be used in circuit as well. So, I just picked up, I just... Uh, took this random uh, graphic card from a computer um, so that we can see the we can try some measurement of the capacitors because these filter capacitors are 1000 microfarad each I'm not sure you can read this but it's 1000 microfarad these filter capacitors so let's put it down and just measure a couple so let's see this one and remember, because we are measuring using such a low voltage, the uh, polarity of the leads doesn't really matter. So we can measure either direction. They should read exactly the same way. So this one is a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, Ah, so this is a little higher than uh, the other ones. So 0.114. So if, you know, so, so basically this says that the, this particular capacitor uh, has a, the highest three times the uh, equivalent series resistance of the others. All these three we just measured are 0.1. This one was 0.4. But is that still okay? Yeah, in this application, I think it's still uh, pretty good. But if you are, you know, seeing the ESRs in the tens of ohms range, then that's something certainly need to raise alarm. So as you can see that for this kind of go-no-go -no -go type of uh, measurements, uh, we really don't need a dedicated ESR meter and uh, a uh, good multimeter, meaning that the bandwidth of the voltage measurement can cover at least uh, uh, 10, uh, 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, and the higher the better. Um, and a function generator is more than enough. Now, what happens if you don't have a multimeter that, say, can cover uh, tens of kilohertz? In that case, what you can do is you can build a, uh, an active uh, rectifier to rectify the signal coming from, the, uh, uh, from, the vault, uh, from your signal generator source and convert that back to DC. So any multimeter can be used uh, in that case. And again, uh, when we're doing the ESR measurement, we need to be uh, careful as to what frequency to use to measure our uh, capacitor under test. 
because of the equivalent equivalent uh, because of the reactance of the capacitors. Uh, we need to make sure that the frequency is high enough so that we can ignore these reactants. Again, I will post these uh, uh, the calculations and uh, these two uh, graphs that I used on my website so that you guys can take a look and uh, those would be helpful uh, if you print them out when you are doing your measurement and you can easily reference these to uh, make a proper measurement. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch up with you next time.